Hey everybody and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast. And in today's forecast, we'll be breaking down two different storms that'll be impacting the United States, one of which will bring an extensive heat wave that is not going anywhere anytime soon, the other of which will be bringing the threat for a tropical storm, possibly even a hurricane, as we go into next week for parts of the United States. I'll give you the latest breakdown on everything that you need to know in this forecast, but let's first begin with what's happening across the United States today. And we'll first begin with parts of the Ohio Valley and as well as the Central Plains. And there are a lot of showers and storms that are currently firing off this afternoon as well as going into the evening hours. Many of which could produce the threat for some isolated large hail and damaging winds over the next several hours. A lot of this convection is needed for some areas for rainfall, but there will be a chance for at least some isolated severe weather. All of which is happening around this heat dome that's sitting in the central United States. And this is basically a ring of fire. That's what we call it here in the weather world. And this is right now basically steering showers and storms all around it so you might notice storms are going different directions some of which are going west to east those are gonna be those storms that are back over in parts of the central and northern plains and then others back over in like ohio for example they're moving more southerly and that is because of this high pressure system that upper level wind area is steering these in different areas back down in the gulf of mexico not a whole lot of activity right now right now we're not really seeing a whole lot however that is about to change over the next 48 to 72 hours as there will be a tropical disturbance coming out of the caribbean that could potentially become a tropical storm or hurricane over the next few days. Now, checking out the tropics, we have four different areas on the map that we're watching, two of which will not impact the United States, and those two would be the ones that are back out in the central Atlantic Ocean. Minimal chances of development here over the next five days. Over the next 48 hours, only a 20% and a 10% chance. So again, nothing too concerning there. A little bit more concerning activity, though, would include tropical storm Franklin. This could become our first major hurricane of the year. It's a low chance, but it has that potential. It will become a strong category two hurricane as it moves toward parts of Bermuda and we'll have to watch that very closely because it will be impacting some land but this is currently expected to stay out to sea it likely will not impact New England or at least the east coast in terms of any significant weather threats there could be some gusty winds there might be some increased wave activity and perhaps some rip currents but we're not looking at anything too substantial there at least as of right now one of the more concerning systems is back over in the Caribbean Sea this will be moving toward the Gulf Coast and we'll talk about more on that here in just a second in terms of Tropical Storm Franklin, again, this will start to move quicker off to the north over the next few days. Right now, it's moving very, very slowly, only moving five miles per hour off to the east-southeast, by the way. It's not even moving north yet. It will start to change directions, moving to the north, and by Sunday morning, this will likely become a Category 1 hurricane. By the time it gets near Bermuda, Category 2 hurricane likely by then. Very large cone of uncertainty right now. That does mean that there's a chance that this could go anywhere in this region, so we could see the eye of the storm go further out here to the west, further out here to the east, but more likely than not, it will likely go in this direction so it should again stay away from the east coast but maybe something to monitor if you're back over near cape cod or right on the immediate coastline because again increased wave activity and as well as rip currents may occur here are those outlined areas by the national hurricane center again our main concern right now is this system that'll be going toward florida and the gulf coast over the next few days over the next five days there is currently an 80 percent chance that this develops into either a tropical storm or perhaps even a hurricane down the road so it's definitely gonna be something to watch out for very closely here over the next several days now in terms of the satellite imagery here across the caribbean sea again this is what we're looking at this activity here right now there's not a whole lot of circulation yet it is battling some wind shear so there's a little bit of wind shear right now parts of really the northern caribbean sea so this area here that's where the strongest wind shear is and that's going to kind of be unfavorable at this point in terms of its development over the next 24 to 48 hours however it is expected to develop more as it enters warm waters in a more favorable environment in the gulf of mexico and this is expected to go toward florida and that's why again this has a bit more of a concern especially for the united states now this is a preliminary look at what we could be talking about in terms of impacts and as well as where this might make landfall etc but again there's a lot of uncertainty and things will change over the next few days so stay tuned we'll keep you posted with the latest wind shear can do a lot of crazy things with these systems so very well could go somewhere else but the european model has been very consistent on the placement of where the system is going to go so in tuesday morning we'll be watching for some showers and storms off the coast of florida so so far not really looking at anything tuesday morning by the afternoon and evening hours though this starts to intensify a bit more pressure level around 996 that's the estimate so again that could be around about a tropical storm maybe a low-end category one hurricane by the time we get into the overnight hours tuesday into wednesday morning the system does intensify further in the warm ocean waters that are available in the gulf of mexico with celsius temperatures around 32 degrees that in the water which is definitely very favorable for this type of environment especially for tropical systems but notice the rainfall that will be a big concern out of this and as well as the damaging wind potential along the coast primarily along the west coast and eventually going 
going through Wednesday morning. This moves off to the north, but it will speed up and it's going to move pretty quickly. But again, this eye could land anywhere. I mean, it really could go anywhere in this area. So we have to still watch this very closely. There's a lot of uncertainty and a lot of things can change. So stay tuned. We'll keep you posted with the latest on what happens here over the next few days. And there's a chance that this doesn't even develop at all. Again, it's only an 80% chance of developing over the next five days in the Gulf of Mexico, which that's a 20% chance we don't see this develop, which would be obviously the preferable option here. That would be mainly rainfall and really not a whole lot of wind out of that. Here's a look at the wind gusts that could occur if this does end up strengthening. So right along the coastline, upwards of 60 to 70 mile per hour wind gusts may occur. And then inland, even like Daytona Beach, Jacksonville, and Orlando, all between 40 to 55 mile per hour winds. But again, that would be contingent on this making landfall somewhere up here, um, anywhere between Tampa and Panama City. So we'll be watching this very closely. You know, we'll keep you posted with the latest details. A lot of things could change. We'll keep you posted with a no hype weather forecast here on the Max Velocity YouTube channel. Now, in terms of the heat across the United States, this is another big kicker with this event, is that the heat wave will continue across a large chunk of the United States. Luckily, this heat dome will retreat back over actually toward Baja, California. And that does mean that we're going to start to see at least slightly cooler weather for parts of the southern and central plains as we go into next week. Temperatures could actually drop into like the mid 90s for DFW. That might not sound crazy to you, but DFW, again, this is North Texas. They've been above 100 degrees 45 times this summer. Last summer was the second hottest summer on record in terms of 100 degree weather. That was 47 times that they hit. So it's about to pass that in the next few days. So at least some relief coming would be well appreciated for those in North Texas. Now for the weather pattern over the next several days, we're going to turn to the jet stream. This is what controls the weather patterns here across the United States. Jet stream as of right now is lifted well back up to the north pretty typical by the way for the summer once we go throughout the weekend and into early next week that heat dome will move down to the south and west again that'll be dominating back down in parts of the southwestern united states increasing the heat wave there while cooler weather will be able to usher in a little bit to parts of the central plains but again it's not going to be really that much cooler it's just going to get us back to near average temperatures once we go into tuesday and wednesday we'll be watching for perhaps another jet stream dip back over in parts of the ohio valley and as well as into the northeast once we go into thursday and friday we could begin to see a couple of trough injections back over in parts of the north Northern Plains and the Rocky Mountains. This would bring the threat for maybe some isolated severe weather, perhaps some showers and storms. And then going into next weekend, things become much more uncertain, but we'll keep you posted with the latest details as we go further. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Again, we'll keep you posted with the latest. In terms of the severe weather potential for the next several days, today's risk is already ongoing, but there are some isolated storms producing hail and damaging winds. That will continue through the evening hours, and this is one of the looks back over in the Ohio Valley for later today. There will be more storm activity firing up during the late evening and overnight hours in parts of Indiana. This could produce again some isolated damaging winds frequent lightning possible maybe some sporadic hail but overall the threat of severe weather is pretty low by tomorrow storms will be moving into kentucky again damaging winds being possible but again the overall threat of severe weather is not organized not looking very concerning this is tomorrow's risk of severe weather for scary storm saturday nothing too crazy as of right now overall the threat is low going into sunday we're looking at nothing too crazy on suspicious storm sunday that is primarily activity back over in the mid-atlantic region for the carolinas and as well as part of georgia and again we'll keep you posted if anything changes but for right Right now, severe weather is at a bit of a lull here across the United States. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you've not already.